right, welcome to another episode of Universe Sandbox. So today what we're going to do is we're just going to see how many Jupiters it takes to collide into each other over and over to create a brown dwarf, which is the smallest version of a failed sun, or a red dwarf, which is um, where hydrogen first starts fusing. It's the smallest thing that we would actually consider to be a sun. So let's take a look. That's 13 of them. And we are going to lose some mass here and stuff, so we'll actually just look at the mass of the largest object once we get it. I suppose it doesn't matter how many total we drop into it. Oof. We just want to find our largest mass eventually. Which I think is going to be this guy. And like I said, so it should be 13 masses of Jupiter to make this a brown dwarf. We just drop seven more in there. Five masses of Jupiter now. And keep in mind too that size and mass are not the same thing. So once a planet gets this big, it starts compressing more and more and more. Even though the mass increases, the size, the radius won't necessarily increase as much. shoot too much stuff off into it or we'll lose mass. <laughs> okay, let's start this over. It's kind of hard to do when they're moving, but that was cool, so I'm going to keep it in the video. That's a lot cleaner. And 41 masses of Jupiter, how did that happen? So let's see here. Now the question is how to find out if it would be, you think it would name it, change the name of it to Dwarf, but because it's out by itself, it might just be calling it a road, rogue object. Let's see here. I'm just looking at what temperature would be required for it to be considered a, a brown dwarf. So according to ChatGPT, brown dwarfs can fuse de deuterium and in some cases lithium, which can occur at lower temperatures than hydrogen. So 
coolest brown dwarfs tend to be around 2200 degrees Celsius. Kelvin to twenty five hundred Kelvin. It actually, says the surface temperature of brown dwarfs can range between seven twenty seven degrees Celsius and twenty two hundred degrees. So I guess there's a pretty large difference, a pretty large disparity that you can have. Hmm, I'm gonna try to see if I can throw like a planet into orbit around here. I still have a lot of fragments going around my stuff, so it's a little bit dangerous, but Let's see if it can keep Earth in orbit yet. <laughs> and then if it has something to orbit around it, it maybe shouldn't be considered a rogue object anymore. Oop. Still wants to call it a rogue object. That should probably be updated in an update as a classification of a planet changes that this title should change. Maybe I just need to put it. That's not right. It has no mass anymore. Huh. Okay. So yeah, I think we definitely have achieved our object objective because we're at 41 masses of Jupiter, which is crazy because I only threw 13 in there. I don't know. Something crazy happened with that explosion or the math is a little bit off in this game, but I do keep in mind that this is a $30 game, so it's not gonna be totally perfect, but it is pretty pretty dang accurate most of the time when I am um, actually looking up data and comparing it to the data in the game. And obviously, we really don't actually know <laughs> everything about our universe and you know what would happen if you were to just crash 13 Jupiters into each other. I'm not sure it's something that we've ever seen happen. Probably not. <laughs> but we can test it out here. How's Earth doing? Oh man, Earth's like kind of doing all right. It hasn't been that long yet. Let's see here. Surface image. Yeah, we even have the Great Lakes still. They tend to like, they tend to just go first for some reason, but you can see they're not connected anymore. They're getting washed up. Yeah, let it go for a little bit longer. That's kind of cool, though. How's our Jupiter doing? We're putting off some heat. It's fluctuating quite a bit. And I don't know how long it would actually take for, you know, these fusions to start happening. It's still just a rogue object.
Let's see here, Neptune's orbiting at a period of 6.8 days. Earth's orbiting at a period of 2.7 days. Because obviously this wouldn't be nearly as hot. I wonder if we're tidally locked or anything. What's our rotation like? Hmm. Seem to be rotating about normal speeds. Wonder if that rotation will slow down over time though. Speeding this up quite a bit now, so now we're going at a let's see five days per second. Hold on, let me focus on Jupiter, then it won't be so wobbly. It's kind of annoying. still have all these uh, fragments that got ejected, so that was where we uh, started everything out. It's probably down here. I'm going to save this right here. This is actually a pretty good point. And then let me, let me know if you guys want me to continue along with this. I think we're at about like eight or nine minutes now, so could try to make an entire universe out of this. We could keep adding more Jupiters to Jupiter and see what it does to Earth. Well, thanks, everybody. Um, have a great day.